Good morning. We're going to get started, so if people could take their seats. Welcome to our 2018 deliberative session. My name is Bob Casas. I'll serve as your moderator today. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Bean, would you lead us in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce the uh, officials on the stage, beginning with Jim Waddell, our chairman, Board of Selectmen, okay. Regina Barnes, the vice chairman, Rick Griffin, Phil Bean, who just led uh, our pledge, and Rusty Bridal. They are joined by our town clerk, Jane Seifer, our town attorney, Mark Gerald, town manager, Fred Welch. Uh, I don't believe the chair of the budget committee uh, is uh, here, but Mr. Pluff is uh, serving uh, in his stead as, I believe, vice chair. Is that correct? And uh, finance director over in the uh, far reaches of the stage, Christy Pulliam. Our administrative assistant, Christina Osman. Um, Deputy Town Clerk Shirley Johini, uh to my right, and our Town Planner, who's going to help us get the day started, Jason Bichon. Supervisors of the checklist are out in the foyer, Harleen Andriozzi, Janine St. Germain, and Barbara Renault. In order to participate as a voter in today's meeting, you need to check in with them and get your voter card. Assisting me today are Nathan Page, Daryl Mosier, Ralph Silva, and Bob Ross. There is coffee and food uh, available in the, in the foyer. Uh, again, it's being sold as part of a fundraiser for the eighth grade uh, trip, Hampton Academy. Uh, they will be taking a three-day trip uh, in the spring, so I uh, hope you can support their efforts. They'll also be having a raffle later on in the day. Today, and I know many of you are faithful participants in these proceedings, and I thank you for that participation. Just to review quickly as a refresher for those who, who uh, do participate annually and those who are new, and I hope there are some who've joined us for the first time today. Today's session is to explain, discuss, debate, and possibly amend the articles that are set forth in the warrant with the exception of those warrant articles whose wording is prescribed by law. For example, the zoning and planning articles that Mr. Bashan is going to uh, discuss as we begin our day, and then there are some collective bargaining agreement articles, Articles 10 through 12, uh, which are not uh, available to be amended. But all these articles, in whatever form you decide, they should read, with the exception of those that are, are uh, exempt from amendment, will appear on the ballot on March 13th when we come back here to Winnicott to vote between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Tuesday, March 13th. Our work today is to determine the wording of those articles, to determine how those articles will appear on that ballot. Our ability to amend is restricted. We can't eliminate an article. We can't introduce new purposes that weren't warned to the voters in the posted warrant and the warrant has been posted in accordance with law. The purposes of appropriations can't be changed, and we can't, uh, and no warrant article shall be amended to eliminate the subject matter, but amendments may change the intent of the article. The rules of today's meeting, I'll proceed one article at a time. I'll read the article after the article has been moved and seconded for discussion. I'll recognize the proponent of the article and then open the article for discussion by the assembly. 
I'll recognize a new speaker on an article before returning to somebody who has already spoken on the article, with the exception that the proponent of the article will be permitted to answer questions or offer further details regarding the purposes of the article in response to a question or opinion as appropriate. For example, we have a number of DPW articles today, and there are officials here from Public Works who will assist us as we work our way through those articles. All questions should be addressed to the moderator. If you wish to speak, please wait to be recognized by the moderator and speak into the microphone. This is critical to make sure that your remarks uh, are carried to our cable broadcast over Channel 22. Please begin your remarks by stating your name and address. We will deal with only one amendment at a time, and the amendments must be in writing. And we have some paper, and Mr. Page can assist you uh, in that process. After the amendment has been moved and seconded, uh, please give the written amendment to me so I can have it correctly for our discussion purposes, and I can give it to the town clerk and uh, Ms. Oseman, and we'll get it, uh, if uh, appropriate, up on the screen. Please focus on the content of the amendment or the article and refrain from personal comments. I will revoke recognition of any speaker who speaks or acts in an abusive or disruptive manner. I will also revoke recognition of any speaker who refuses to keep his or her comments relevant to the article under consideration or is needlessly repetitive. Non-residents will be allowed to speak on the affirmative vote of the meeting, and if an issue arises during the meeting that's not covered by these rules, I intend to use fairness and majority rule as guiding principles with due consideration for the minority's right to be heard. This is your meeting, and as a result, uh, determinations of the moderator may be overruled. When we vote, voting will be conducted uh, typically by a, um, a card vote. That's why it's necessary for you to check in with the supervisors. So I'll be asking you to raise your voter card on occasion. Five voters may make a request in writing prior to a vote that the vote be taken by secret <coughs> written ballot, and we have uh, ballot machines in the foyer uh, to address that if it's necessary. After the vote has been declared and before any other business has, been, has begun, any non-ballot vote, so any hand vote, may be questioned by seven voters and the vote will be retaken by secret yes-no ballot. Reconsideration of votes previously taken may be restricted at any time during the meeting by an affirmative vote of the meeting, and if that occurs, that article uh, will not be discussed further uh, today. Uh, please, uh, no cell phone conversations and... Um, uh, be respectful of the meeting and process if you need to uh, carry on a conversation, lots of room uh, out in the foyer. Uh, per the state fire code, please note the location of the exits. Uh, I think they're well marked. If fire alarm activates, please leave the building by the nearest exit and help anyone who needs assistance, and uh, we would assemble in front of the SAU building uh, if necessary. At this time, I'll entertain uh, a motion to allow non-resident staff of the Town of Hampton to speak during the meeting to answer questions and provide information regarding any Warren article, specifically the following individuals. Uh, Fred Welch, Mark Gerald, Kevin Schultz, Christy Pulliam, Diana Martin, Ed Tinker, Jamie Ayotte, Christina Osman, Chris Jacobs, Amanda Cooper, and Jed Carpentier. Do I have a motion? Oh, well, Moved second. by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Griffin, those uh, folks fill the positions of town manager, town attorney, the building inspector, the finance director, the recreation director, the assessor, the fire chief, the administrative assistant, the public works director, the lane library director, and the president of the fire union. All in favor, please raise your voter cards. Thank you. Down cards. Any opposed? Those individuals will be able to. Yes? When we get to Article 7, let's take that issue up. Thank you.